Hi, this is Ross Bucher from Controlman Icon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how you can use Live View to detect motion and use that detection of motion to trigger the shutter or capture video. Now, this is a new feature on Controlman Icon, and it can be a lot of fun and provide a lot of new creative opportunities for you, especially when you're unable to wait around your camera or computer for something to occur. Maybe you want to set up your camera at a bird feeder or some other motion event that you wanted to capture. And now you can do that very easily. So let's take a look how it's done. First thing you need to do is ensure you're in Live View. And here I'm connected with my D7000 in Live View. And I'm just going to turn it off, back on, and I have a test image here with a bit of motion. And we could set up the motion trigger right here. And here is everything we need to set for it. So first of all, we'll enable it. If Controlman Icon has discovered any motion here, it's going to display little dots on your screen. So what we can do here is reduce the threshold, and you should start seeing some dots. And there is some right there. These are very small dots, and basically Controlman Icon is determined that there's enough change in contrast here from moment to moment that there must be some kind of motion. We can see generally that there's a little bit more here than there is over here where there's less contrast between the edges of this white area and a light background. And we can even see some dots way up here for some reason. And I'm going to decrease the threshold a bit more. And there's definitely no motion up here. This is just the edge of the glass bulb. Control my Nikon has determined that there's motion here, but it's really just noise. And we're going to take a look at how we can reject that noise with these settings. Now the best way to reject noise is to increase the dot size. So I'm going to increase it here. But as you do that, you'll need to decrease your threshold. So now we have larger dots. And areas up here are no longer blinking uh, because the larger dots are able to reject the noise. And the way this works is in any given area in here, because these images sent from your camera to control an icon are just basic JPEGs, there's a lot of noise in them and a lot of compression artifacts. And if your dot is very small, the control an icon will think it's noise. Let's try zooming in a little bit in this image. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to zoom. And let's look right here. Now you can see on this dark area here, there's a lot of jittering happening here, and really that is just due to noise and compression artifacts. And I'll go down a little bit further, and we can see it here where these dots are popping up. That there's motion here. So I'm just going to zoom out a little ways. Let's take a look in another area. How about over here? This edge of the bulb also has a lot of noise and jitter going on. And if the dot is very small, Control My Icon is going to think that this is movement. Because what happens is it takes an average of all the intensity changes in a particular dot over time. And if the average of these changes over time are greater than the threshold, then it'll declare that it is movement and put a bright dot there. Now we could change the color of these dots by changing the color picker here. And you can also change the opacity if they're a little bit too bright. But let's just leave them as red for now. So I'm still seeing a little bit of additional movement down here, but that's okay because really the shadow is causing movement. Now you could try and tune that out a little bit and increase the threshold or increase the dot size. And as a rule of thumb, you like to have the highest possible dot size and the highest possible threshold. So here is a pretty good setting for this scene right here. Now it really only takes one dot to trigger one of these actions down here. And right now I have it set that it's going to trigger the shutter and capture an image. So 
So now all I need to do is set a target. So we need to draw a target on the screen. And to do that, you click on the Edit button here, then start left-clicking on the screen. And here I've created a target around most of the movement. So any time dots are detected in here, it's going to trigger this action and it's going to capture an image. But we can also adjust the sensitivity of that. Now, if you like to draw a different target, you could just right click to clear it or click on the clear button here. And maybe you just want your target to be right here. So you can just draw your target wherever you like. Now initially it's green, which means that it is not triggered anything based on the detected movement. Now we need to tell it how many dots will be enough for it to cause a triggering action. So we just move this slider downwards, and I'm just going to end my editing session by clicking on edit here. And I'll slide this down, and you'll notice it slowly turns red. If I turn it all the way, down to one, that means that if there's one dot in there at any given time, it will cause a trigger to happen. And one dot in this case is all we need. There could be some situations, maybe if you're photographing a bird feeder, you may want more than one dot because one dot might be all it takes for a fly or some other insect to trigger it for you as it flies by the feeder. A bird is much larger, and so it would have a lot more dots for its movement. So you just need to fine tune it to get the correct amount of dots and the dot size. Let's say I only need one dot to trigger this. I'm going to set the action here as shooting, and I could shoot it to run a script or record video as well here, but I'm going to increase this to uh, 15 seconds because I don't want this to be continually shooting here. I just want it to take a shot and maybe rest a little bit and then 15 seconds later, if there's more movement, it could take another shot. Okay, so I'm going to click on Enable and you should hear it take a shot. All right, it's captured its image and now it's turned gray, which means it's in reset mode. So it's going to wait 15 seconds before it attempts to reset. Now this image has been transferred to your computer and it's the settings that we have here are what it used to take the shot. So there goes another shot. And now if you want to stop it, you just click on this here to remove the check mark and it's no longer enabled. Okay. Now there's some different variations here. We can have it record some video. And I'm going to record a five second video and reset in 15 seconds. And for video, you want to give it a bit more time to reset because it has to transfer a larger file back to your computer. So I'll enable it. And you can see it recording. Now the recording is complete. You can see the transfer. And now it is in a reset. Okay, so now it is disabled. Now you can also do continuous shooting here. So uh, maybe you do have that bird coming up to the feeder and as it's about to land on the feeder, it's going through several very nice compositions and nice poses as it slows down, it has its wings really wide and you'd like to use continuous shooting to take maybe 10 rapid shots of this bird. Maybe you're far enough away so the bird can't hear all this happening on your camera. So let's see how we'd set that up. What we wanna do is set it back here to shoot and go over here to continuous. Now you need to ensure that the continuous mode has been turned on on the camera body. We can't turn that on through tethering. So you need to flip the dial on your body for tethering. I'm gonna turn it on this Nikon D7000 to continuous shooting high mode so it's fastest. Okay, so now it's going to take a shot. Now if I turn up the limit here, let's say I want to take 10 shots. And we'll give it a lot longer reset time because it has to transfer a lot of files. I'll bring it up to a minute. You can just use this or you could type in 60 seconds here. Now there's a trick in using continuous mode and that is concerning how the focus is handled. 
Here in Live View, we're using contrast autofocus. And if you were to press this button here, it's going to autofocus wherever the focus box was. I'll just bring up the focus box. And I'll focus here. Okay, so we're focused. Now, for some reason, Nikon, when it's doing continuous shooting and you're in live view, will take the first shot using this focus. And then every subsequent shot in its continuous capture, so the other nine images in this case, it's, it's going to try to focus with phase autofocus. Not too sure why it does that, but it causes a bit of a problem here. Because once you have this all set up, you do not want the focus to change. You want the focus to remain steady throughout the, the entire sequence of captures. So there's some tricks we can do to get around that. First one is to ensure that the phase autofocus box, and that's that little box you see on the viewfinder in your camera, is in the, is the exact same location you did your contrast autofocus. That means it's going to attempt to phase autofocus in the same spot, and it should keep the proper focus. And that may even be desirable since if you have that bird that's just about to alight on your bird feeder, you may want your camera to attempt to focus that every time it's taking a shot. Okay, so that's one way you could take care of it. And the other way is just turn the autofocus off on your lens or on your body. Just turn it to manual focus. So then the body will fail to focus, but it'll take the shots anyways. Just make sure that you have the body set to the focus mode that allows you to take a shot without it being a focus. And that, on most bodies, is AF-S as in SAM. So I'm just going to turn off autofocus on my lens, and we'll give it a try. Okay, now we're going to enable the trigger, and it should capture a continuous capture of 10 images. And we'll see the focus is when we come back into live view, it's still focused on the same spot. Now that body tried to change the focus. That's just the way the Nikon body works. But we prevented it from happening by turning that switch off. Now I'm just going to re-enable the autofocus switch on my lens. And now we're going to try it with that enabled. And you're going to see that the focus gets messed up when we do this. Let's give it a try one more time. And right now it is just waiting to reset, but I'll just hurry that along by disabling it and enabling it. And now when we go back in the live view, we can see the focus is being screwed up. It took the first shot in focus, but all the rest, it phase focused and focused on who knows what. And focused on something else, something that is behind the phase autofocus box in your viewfinder. So there are workarounds for this. And when you have it all set up, it's real handy because you can get a lot of quality images of things that are very difficult to capture just by holding your camera or standing at your tripod all day waiting for something to happen. Bring a lawn chair along and a cold drink and uh, just enjoy it while your camera does all the work. And I'll just disable this. Now there's some limitations here concerning the performance of your computer. We do a lot of image processing here, and that requires a pretty capable computer. So if you have a slower computer or a uh, you know an old netbook that's got an Atom uh, processor in it or a slow AMD CPU, the frame rate you see here is going to be very choppy. Here we're getting 24 frames per second of 640 by 426 JPEG sent to control by Nikon by the camera. And that takes a lot of processing power to display. On this particular computer, it's very fast. However, on slower laptops, this is going to look real jerky and laggy, and you might get 10 frames a second. And so detecting motion makes it even worse. You might get 8 frames a second. So if you have very fast motion, it may miss that and uh, be unable to capture it. So it's just a good idea to always use the fastest computer or a laptop or whatever you have available for this. If you're going shopping for a computer that's going to be running Control My Icon, Ensure that you have an Intel CPU on it because it is fastest in image processing. It does make a very big difference between using an Intel CPU over an AMD CPU. Now, even if you do have a fast computer, there is a delay between the detection of motion 
and the triggering of the shutter. And that could be up to several hundred milliseconds. And that's just the delay between image processing, internal communication with the control my Nikon, uh, passing information through the drivers to your body, and then finally the shutter delay within the body. So if you're looking to capture extremely fast motion, such as a water droplet hitting some other water, this is really not going to work because it's not fast enough. If someone is to throw a baseball past the lens from side to side very close, you wouldn't be able to see that either. If that was at a distance and it was nicely in focus, maybe. But you need to just be aware that very fast things are not going to be detectable. For the best motion detection, the better lighting and the better contrast you have, the better. And of course, if there's any motion in the background, that also will complicate things. So if you have a bird feeder and you're hoping to catch a bird landing on the feeder, if there's a lot of moving foliage in behind the feeder, then the motion trigger is going to pick up on that all the time. So you need to kind of separate that and try to have a nice, stable, static background where there's no motion. Now this also works when you're zoomed in. So if you zoom here, it zooms wherever the focus box is, you can have it zoom right in on your image and then look for motion in this area. I'm just going to zoom back out. Let's take a look up here. And you can see how it slows down a little bit as we're zoomed in here. This is actually uh, how the camera processes it. It's just uh, a little bit slower. So here I might elect to remove this target and draw one here instead. So there's a lot of possibilities here. In this case, you may have a very long telephoto lens and zoom in on it to try and capture a bird or something at quite a long distance, maybe something that's very shy. So that's it. That's how you set up motion triggers in Control My Icon. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. And uh, feel free to experiment as much as you like on this and uh, try to capture something in motion. Happy tethering.